Today is the last chapter of this book club, um, which is basically chapter 13. Um, data analysis examples where it takes some, yeah. um, you know, uh, real world data set and, you know, try to, you know, play with the data to show us some of the, you know, um, things that we learn in all the chapters from one to through chapter 12. And it starts working with the data bit, bit, um, um, bit, bit ly data set which is used you know to shut in a website and basically the data is you know all the website with government and mail that are shut in um that we're gonna see so this is um you know they already have the data set here and uh, we can see the data is provided in the data set you know um file so this is a data set yeah, so if you look at it, this is how the data set is. And we can see like the data set is somehow kind of in, um, you know, JSON, right? We can see this is it, you know, in somehow kind of, uh, you know, uh, dictionary, but is, this is JSON representation. Um, so we're gonna look at how we can basically be able to read this JSON file, convert it into data frame and try to, you know, um, work, um, <coughs> extract some information we can see, yep. So, um, because this is each line is a JSON file. When we print each line here, we can see um, we can see the first one here that we have here, Mozilla, something like that, Windows NT and stuff like that. So this is a JSON file. But um, printing printing one file um, allow us to see how the file work is. But we we need to you know put all these together maybe in some way. So um, we can use a JSON you know. Uh, stuff to load all the files in the stuff. So here we have, you know, JSON and now we have everything now in record. And now let's look at the first one. So we can see this is, um, you know, the first record in that. Um, yeah, so now we load the data set, we may, you know, try to do some analysis. So the first thing they try to do is counting the time zones in the data. So if we look at the data here, for example, we can see like the time zone is we have America, New York. So he wants to see, okay, how many time zones do we have? Um, here they started looking at, you know, um, time zones, trying to filter um, uh, uh, for each time zone in this, but it turns out that there is some, you know, uh, missing record without time zone. So they said, okay, we need to filter if the time rock, if the time zone is available, then yeah. So this is, um, you know, you can see these are the missing, one of um, time zones which are missing. That's why uh, this example is given us. Uh, so this is just trying to tell us um, what are we going to, you know, play with. So um, in this data set, we're going to basically play with um, time zones. Um, yeah. Now um, counting the time zones. So he explored counting the time zone basically in Python and also, you know, um, in Pandas. So he tried to show us like in Python is more a bit uh, involved than in Pandas, which is more simpler. And, you know, he constructed this function. Basically we said, see like get counts. So given he construct a dic empty dictionary and for anything in what we give, um, increment if it is available to count it and else, um, you know, uh, this. So this is just a function that do that. Um, but also we can use the same with a default dict, um, which is basically, you know, uh, uh, the same way as dictionary, but it initialized stuff to zero. It doesn't give an error. So um, having run that, we can see um, this guy uh, get count um, given the time zones, you know, uh, file. And now we can, you know, count this. So here we have this value for these uh, time zones. And uh, we can see the total, we have these. And yeah, so here we wanna see like how many top 10 in the data. So here they are calculating the top 10. So top 10, and you know, we construct a function called top count. And now here we have top 10 time zones. So basically, um, you know, we are working to see, you know, which actually, um, you know, how we can play with that. Um, yeah. But also this counting here, we can see that we use top counts, but um, counts also, as we saw here, like using these where we default dict, uh, Python also has some kind of, you know, easier stuff to do that. 
Um, so here we, we have what is called counter from collections that allows you to um, you know, count some kind of key uh, dictionary keys and their values. So when we call counter on from collections, it allow us to, you know, to enumerate the values and the uh, keys. So this is something um, quite useful. Um, Ron, have you been using this counter but, uh, before? No, this is the first time I've ever even seen it. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. It's kind of yeah. cool. I mean, I've always done it the hard way, I guess, just making my own counter. I mean, I would never even <laughs> thought to look for such a, such a thing. Yeah, all right. And the next one here they talk about is, um, you know, um, uh, yeah, yeah, something but they are trying to explore it is in pandas. So, um, um, yeah. So, um, given this record, we have the. Hello, Leia. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, Leia. Hey guys. Uh, sorry, I'm a little late. My meeting ran over. Okay. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Just getting started. Are you doing this again, Ken? Sorry. Are you presenting again? Yeah. Okay. Oh, what is what are you saying? No, nothing. I just I sorry. That's all. That's all I'm. That's all I'm saying because you did it last time too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we are going through the last chapter, which is basically um examples of what we have seen in the previous sessions. Just yeah. So what I'm doing right now is going to the first example. Um, counting time zones in a given data. And now we have seen how we can count the time zones using Python, but it's better, it's more easier to use pandas. So here we create um, a frame um, from the, the data frame and from the record. And now this is uh, data we have. Um, yeah, so we can just look at the, you know, no, no, no. Okay, let me run this. Um, Okay, so we can see, um, you know, we have the time zone and now we can see, um, you know, sample of the time zone because um, when we look at this frame here, we can see this is what happened. Yep, so we can see this is a time zone here we have, and this is a different kind of time zones in the data. Um, we want to see, um, you know, the sample. And basically, um, you know, instead for using, we can use this value counts. So this value counts in pandas will try to, you know, enumerate each occurrence, you know, um, with that. So do we have, Layla, something similar in R that basically count? Yeah, it's count, right? Yeah, yeah we count. have that N. Huh? N. So it's oh, N, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. count N, yeah. So here is, they have something value counts. Um, yeah, which basically have this. So in R, we have something count and that gives us this. Um, so this is basically, you know, um, working with um, one column of the data, which is time zone. Um, yeah, so we can also visualize the time zones available, right? Um, so um, here we need to, before we do this visualization, we can, you know, remove the missing value and start to clean the data. That's what we do here. And now this is the data without, you know, missing values. And now we can just, you know, use, um, you know, c -bone that we have already seen here. We create the uh, figure here and now we can use c -bone. Um, Yep, so we subset it here. We can see um, subset and now we provide the subset here, index and y is the subset to NumPy. So this is basically, um, you know, what we have um, at it. Okay, so this is basically, um, you know, trying to see only one information from the um, data, which is uh, time zone information. But they also they say, say the data has some kind of, you know, browser and device informations for people that are working on that. So let's look at what does that mean? So um, uh, <clears throat> in our frame here, we have already have, so this is it, right? Um, we can see this column A with something windows, you know, what this means. Um, so there is information about the browser um, device, you know, which is Windows NT and applications used. So for example, here, this is the application, you know, uh, you know, people are using. So that's what we're gonna maybe try to see, um, you know, what are the application, what, so yeah. So this is it. 
So we can see the first one here, which is this guy here, um, this, you know, and uh, the 51 we can see here. Uh, this is, you know, the browser, the, um, you know, uh, operating system, I can say, yeah, device, and maybe the application they use it. So with this information, we can try to find, you know, the user behavior for that. So what is trying to do here is, you know, um, try to um, find, you know, some user behavior based on that. So. <clears throat> why would we, why would, what would I use this for? Which one? This information. Sorry? This kind of information. Mm. Oh, okay. So um, you missed that. Um, the data set, um, this is the data set we are using. Oh, it's just part of the data set. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's, yeah, it's part of the data set. So the data set contain those kind of information. Got you. <clears throat> yeah, so, um, you know, trying to um, see, uh, yeah, okay. So they drop NA and trying to see, you know, what is the data here? You know, this is the browser they are using, you know, and try to see um, also the value counts, um, um, the, even the version of the browser that people are using, you know, all the application that people are using with their BlackBerry um, stuff. So this is some information, all the data is working. And also they wanna see like um, people that are using Windows and non-Windows user because the data contain all this information. So you can see Windows NT, right? Um, content compatible, Macintosh, you know. So they're trying to find out how many users are within Windows and how many users are not using Windows. So this is something also useful to try to do data analysis on that. So this is one of the what they want to do. Um, first, they want to drop um, NA um, and try to uh, find, you know, uh, do this uh, using NumPy where. So where column A contents because we can see here in column A, we can see like Windows, right? We can see compatible Macintosh. So where column A, we have Windows, then we can name, we can create a new column, say this is Windows user. If it does not contain any um, Windows word, then it's not a Windows. So this is what they use here. Um, yeah, yeah. NP where the data frame that contains Windows, then create a new Windows, name it, and if not, not Windows. So because it's a string, that is why we use string content. So here we can see uh, the first one, Windows, the second one, not Windows, something like that. And from here, we can grow by by the, um, you know, uh, uh, the this TZ and the uh, what we um, have now created here, operating system. And now here we can see not Windows and Windows. Um, yep. So that's basically um, what they try to do on these, you know, uh, data sets to try to, you know, uh, <laughs> look at some information about the user. Um, you want to add something, uh, Laila? No. <laughs> okay. You want me um, to add something? Sorry? I said, do you want me to add something? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'll add something. Continue. Okay. So um, uh, finally, in this data set, they try to see the overall time zones. Um, you know, what is basically... Um, mm. Okay. So they try to see the overall time zones, um, you know, in the data. And now they create, um, you know, um, based on the counts, um, how which one is having the highest number. And now here we can see that they subset them and now arrange them based on the uh, time zones they are having the uh, uh, largest number. And, you know, they just plot them uh, here. So anyway, so um, that's... If there's any kind of, if any particular reason why it's an array. Person. Which one? This like okay they did the they sorted the sum of the columns right mm -hmm. sort at the end and they select the top 10 
Exactly. And I, so. I know. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Arg, like when you see like args or like the arg functions, that, that's for array functions, right? Array. Sorry. That when you like args, arg sort at the mm -hmm. end, instead of using, um, I think just plain old sort, there is, that's for array functions, right? Mm. Like the difference? Like yeah, why? I think that's correct. Okay. I'm wondering like if there was any particular reason this is an array form because, you know, usually for like linear algebra and stuff, but this is, this could have just been like a series. Uh, um, that's a good question. I don't know why that is either. Um, so then again, like, I think that's a common theme throughout this book. So maybe it's just for consistency sake. Um, I don't know what some of the, so is ag count ag, ag counts is a data frame. And then we do the sum on it. I'm surprised it doesn't return a series. Because <laughs> I think of the arc. Yeah. Ag counts, I guess. Look it at is it. a series. Look at it. So <laughs> this is a series. But what we are doing here, you can see like um we are taking um oh. Values, when you do yeah. values, you get the series. That's yeah. where you get the array. That's what's happening. Yeah, yeah the values does values is exactly yeah. the the way you turn a, a, yeah. a panda in back into a numpy thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's what um you know turn. That's this, what's yeah. going on there. I just missed that line. I'm like, what is going on there? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that right. so it's indexer is a is a num is a panda series, and then mm -hmm. the indexer dot value values is a numpy array because that's what values does and mm -hmm. then then he yeah. takes the first 10. now why did he turn into an array is another question but i think that's make it easier to turn into an index i guess yeah, I don't the, know. yeah the one of um you know uh okay um uh, index uh well actually he doesn't use that later he just he just directly uses the series oh. so he doesn't actually use oh, yeah. that as an uh -huh. array I don't, yeah <laughs> no reason why no reason to do that then just to confuse yeah. us <laughs> in, fact, <laughs> in fact, they say like uh, you know success, uh, yeah. success. <laughs> <laughs> so even pandas, they have what is something called n largest. Um, Layla, do you know this function? Um, n largest that is used. What we are doing here, like to sort, it just you know sort bit on the largest. Yeah. N, n largest. Probably. Huh? That from the name. I'm looking at the chapter right now, and it you know there's. Arg sort and legs lex sort for lexog lexic oh my god lexicographical mm -hmm. sorting. <laughs> um, I'm just reading a, just a little bit about the like just the context around these functions. Mm. It's indirect sorting. That's what uh, arg sort is. Yeah. So the direct sort is the other one. In place sorting. Okay. Okay, so it says when it says the array sorry. Sort is an in place sort for the sort function, the regular sort function. Yes. Mm -hmm. Meaning that the array contents are rearranged without producing a new array. Uh, arg sort? Is, yeah, this is no, this is regular sort. Okay. Just plain old sort. So it doesn't produce a new array. When sorting mm -hmm. arrays in place, remember that if the array is viewed on a different n array, the original array will be modified. Mm -hmm. So this is like, you have to keep that in mind. Um, Let's see. Um, that is the that's the built-in the Python built-in sort. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this is one thing I that confuses me, but I guess we have this in R two about Python. So if you on the other hand, there's NumPy sort. So mm -hmm. if you call NumPy and you do np dot sort. Yes. It creates a new sorted copy of an array. Mm -hmm. And it accepts the but same it, argument. As, but it's all sorted, right? It's sorted. Yeah, it's sorting. So the, the actions are the same, but it's the effects that mm -hmm. are different. 
So mm -hmm. the built-in sort function just modifies the existing array. Mm -hmm. NumPy sort creates a copy of the array. And mm -hmm. then arg sort is what's called an indirect sort. Mm -hmm. So that's something different. Is that so in um, arg sorts lets you reorder by one or more keys. So you can probably pass in like mm -hmm. multiple things you want to sort by. Mm. The key thing that arg sort does is it doesn't actually sort anything at all. It actually gives you a list of uh, indexes you would in the order that you would need them to be, right? How does it say it? Uh, mm -hmm. It turns the integer indices that would sort the series. That's how uh, the documentation puts it. So yeah. these are the indexes. Well, that's why it's called an indexer here, the name of the thing. But yeah. these are the indexes into the array. That if you use these, if you use these as your indexes, you'll get things sorted in the right order. Yeah. It tells you how to reorder the data to be in yeah. sorted order. Yeah, that's, that's the way I say it. So things weren't confusing enough. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. And then they have the lexical version for categorical data. I, I forgot which chapter is that? This chapter, Advanced NumPy. Ah. It's in the, it's in the book. Oh, you can't see it because of my thingy, but it's there. Page. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm using this, the second edition, so it's 478. Uh -huh. I mean, OK, I just. I just want to clear that up because now it was, it was ah ready. okay. It's in appendix then advanced numpy. Oh, it is. Oh, whoops! I thought it was this chapter. Oh yeah, you're right. It has appendix. In, in the third edition is in the um appendix. Oh, in the second edition too. I just didn't see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. If you should have put that in the thing, <laughs> not in the appendix. Yeah, I mean, I'll be. I'll be honest with you I, when i went through this chapter i'm like he just seems to be pulling stuff out of here and pulling stuff out of there and I'm like, <laughs> i don't i don't think i could have done that myself yeah yeah i think uh, maybe he was like uh it, demonstration you know, yes exactly dazzles <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the next chapter he talked about let's just look at it is just a movie lens 1m data set um, the data provide movie ratings, movie data, genres and year, and demographic data about users. Um, Ron, how do you spell this one? Is it generous, gen, gen? How do you say this thing? Genre. Genre. Okay. Genre. <laughs> okay. I know it doesn't look like that, but that's it's a genre. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Like the name John. With rough at the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, this is just a data set that he manipulate and see some information about the data, and the data basically contain, um, you know, um, it's spread across th three tables, um, rating tables, user tables, and information and movies. So this is you know. Uh, users table and you know ratings table and the movies table so three tables and um, we can see here for example this is the you know user table we have id age you know equation we can see the rating table which give the rating for age and every movie you know with the movie id you know the timestamp and also we can see there is user id who give this rating and be because the user is connected with this rating and we see um, we have a movie table and the movie table basically have you know the title the movie id and general so we can see um in this table we have relation between this table and this table right so we have three table all um yeah we want to just look at it and see whether we can do some so so the first thing he talked is just the merge right so we know that we can do merging uh, we have seen merge function that allow us to you know, match data frame along the, you know, uh, this. So we can see here we have, uh, because we can see this first table, we have user ID. And also here we have the rating, we have user ID in rating table and user. Then we can match this to table first. And now when we match this to table first, then the resultant table, we have a movie ID, right? Then we can match the movie ID, the resultant table using movie ID with the movie table. So that's what he does here. And he does PD match um, rating with the users. 
another result is now match it again with the movie table. So that's where you, we have this giant, you know, table uh, like that. And um, yeah, so he started looking, just looking at this. And, you know, the first thing he want to see is, you know, the ratings. So he want to explore the ratings. Um, the, the first thing he want to explore is the, the mean uh, movie review rating um, group by gender. That is, um, you know, um, what men gives, what is the ratings, mean rating given by men for movies and what is the mean rating given by female for each movie. So that's what he does here. Um, Using pivot table here, we can see, um, you know, um, we have the rating female, this is the rating male, this is the rating, you know. Um, so this is a rating by, you know, each, um, you know, gender. Um, Leila, have you used before pivot table? Um, I covered it in my chapter for the book <laughs> club, but as an application, no. Okay. Yeah, right. So <laughs> <laughs> I did okay. for these kind of no, never mind. I used R. <laughs> I have to do this. I like when I have to do these kind of things, I just I get like I don't have time to like figure it out and I just go back to R and I'd like just do the yes, me summary too. or something like that. Something I already know yeah. how to do. Yes. Yeah. And so that's somebody has built a package that with a function that does this beautifully like why do i have to recreate the wheel right <laughs> Good point. yeah yeah exactly so this really happens to me a lot like because i need to use um you know this python for machine learning deep learning but yeah. when i do you know data analysis i'm preparing data I just go back and put the data shot, you know, quickly and bring it to machine learning uh, space. Yeah, exactly. You clean it in R and then yes. transfer it over. I wonder, have you been using the Corto? Yes. I'm, mm -hmm. Are you able, yeah. so I, I don't know if I've figured out how to use both languages in there. Yeah. So in R, you can use in R studios because I'm using Py, um, BS code. In BS code right now, you cannot use that thing. Python I and R. In R Studio, but what happens is like when I load a data set with Tidyverse, right? Mm -hmm. It stays in my global environment. But when you load Python, right? It use reticulate to load Python into your environment. I can't, I can't like access that data set. Maybe I'm doing uh, something wrong, but I don't know. I try to do exactly that because for me professionally, like I'd rather have my whole analysis together instead of like, some stuff that I took yes, 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 stuff, you know yes. I mean? yeah. So I don't know. I, but, I'm not this out. but yeah, but yeah, I don't know. But I thought in R Studio it works like seamlessly. Maybe because I'm I doing something wrong. I thought so too. I was I was so excited and when I went to go try it out. Like I I couldn't get it to find. Okay, because yeah. like I tried to work it in R BS code and it doesn't work. And now I I, I tried to create a full request. And so like it was already there, a full request was already there that in BS code it doesn't work in, but in R it was working, they put it there. So that's where I was, you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So, mm, okay. So yeah, so this is where we are. Yeah, so here the, you know, calculate the movies, um, you know, the different, um, you know, uh, mean for a different gender and now they filtered you know movies that uh, that receive less than 250 you know ratings um yeah so that what they do here you know rating title that are greater than 250 and now they have uh, activities title that is these are the titles that receive um, you know rating yeah, basically that's he, what he's doing. He's just trying to, to play with the data, do some kind of wrangling with the data. And now um, here he uses, you know, um, you know, filter based on the rating, the mirror rating that um, is greater than that, and also filter it with this. Um, Okay, so another thing he works on this data is something called majoring dis rating disagreement, uh, meaning, you know, 
different group may have disagreement based on the rating. So that's where he works here. Um, now he created a mean, you know, ratings, which is, you know, we can see that suppose you want to find movie that are most divisive between males and viewers, between male and female viewers. One way is to add column mean rating containing the difference in the mean then sort by that. So here that's what he does, the mean rating by the male, the mean, the, the you know, the, the difference. And now he sort by the value. So we can see here where we have that. So we can see here like female here, this is a review they have three for this and this is the review for male and stuff like that. Then regarding this order, we can see here, um, you know, um, um, here we can see like the order is that the male for the female, it started from you know the movies that have highest review. The low point is you know um, you know uh, oh it's not like that anyway. Um, but we can see here like for male, um, it is you know increasing you know um, the review in some way. So that's why he sorted these guys, and we can see like um, we sort these, and we have something like you know uh, the uh, highest. <laughs> Um, review ratings. Uh, okay, so they have also another one, disagreement among viewers, um, which is basically, you know, um, disagreement uh, not only on the uh, main and female, but also among the viewers all. Um, so here, the, you know, uh, say they want to use, um, you know, um, uh, standard deviation first to calculate standard deviation and use that to uh, uh, find the uh, uh, disagreement. So here we can see um, we calculate, you know, standard deviation first, um, rating SD standard deviation. And now here we can see we basically filter by the activities we have, the films we have. And now here, this is, um, you know, the standard deviation we have by the, uh, that. Uh, 